The world of classic Doom modding is a genesis point for everything that is perceived as a modification, the act of changing or revamping existing assets for the purpose of enhancing or tailor-making the game itself. It is the game's greatest strength today and is the main reason why people still continue to play it beyond their already addicting gameplay. Some of the most iconic games over the past decade, such as Fallout New Vegas or Minecraft or even Skyrim, are giant pillars of the modding world because of how they allow you to do almost anything you want within the game. And whether you like them or not, their legacy has lived on from the community input provided by the modding community, giving different adaptations of what they'd like to see or do in their respective games. Classic Doom has reached an unquantifiable amount of them, including the ones lost to time over the years. But with such a large deposit of mods or add-ons that are easily accessible, it's also hard to find quality gems in the massive ocean that is Doom modding. From gameplay overhauls, improvement mods, or total conversions that change the setting and story, among other things. The most common ones, however, are WADs, or Mega WADs, which are either a single map or a collection of maps. And there are lots of amazing ones, like Eve Eternity, Alien Vendetta, Ancient Aliens, Scythe, Sunlust, and Back to Saturn X. But one in particular is not only a well put together collection, but also one that is unique because of its circumstance. This is the Japanese Community Project. The Japanese Community Project is a collection of different maps made from several map makers from Japan. The idea was to show the Western Doom community that they could make maps as well. And to kickstart this idea, the leader of the project, Tatsuya Ito, also known as Tatsuya Kakokako, created what was described as a low threshold project. What this means is that the Japanese Doom fans could step forward and provide a map for the project. Regardless if it was a beginner or a complex level, it didn't matter. The maps would be looked at and eventually curated in what we have here, the Japanese Community Project. 32 maps of individual levels that vary from more simplistic designs like the first WOD, first assault, or something large and very complex like map 27, a resplendent emerald green. With amazing attention to detail with its own unique functions that you need to discover in order to traverse the level. The only relation that they have with each other is that they're made by Japanese Doom fans, each of the respective map makers putting their own effort to make some quality maps for classic Doom. The maps themselves are quite challenging, even on the Hurt Me Plenty difficulty, but that is something that a lot of megawards have in common, and it isn't to the point of being unfair. Like with the video I did on Maximum Doom, I won't go over every map, but I will point out some favourites of mine on the Japanese community project. Map 7, Confused Arena by Tatsuid Kakokako. It's an interesting take on the dead simple map from Doom 2, where you had Mancubis followed by Arachnatrons, well, it expands on that and adds even more enemies, and an Archie to add insult to injury. Map 12, Magnetic Force Apparatus by Barabo Jr. The beautiful skybox and the catchy music on top of the narrow pathways and chunks of enemies make it a fun and gory level. Can be tough though if you've wasted too much ammo from before. Map 11, my fave from Nanka Kurashiki, which is sort of like a more vertical version of the Tricks and Traps level from Doom 2. The constant revisiting of the hub area while finding all the keys, getting through the demons along with several surprising changes throughout the level made it a more interesting one in comparison to some of the others. Map 27, a resplendent emerald green by Barabo Jr. Now when I said that the maps vary from simple to complex, this is what I meant. A large multi-layered map full of enemies, secrets and well put functions that affect your navigation of the level. It's also one of the most confusing levels in the Megawad 2 because you don't complete it by doing the usual method of finding all three keys and then heading for the exit. You have to instead find all 13 of the hanging commander canes as you see here and then kill them. Only then can you leave the level. It's also gorgeous to look at with its greenish hellscape and large structures, showing that even with such an old game like Doom 2, you can create some wonderful level designs with it. And finally, map 28. Hellport by Barabo Jr. also. I've always enjoyed the hell levels in Doom games. Their medieval archaic landscapes with the Inferno Red atmosphere has always provided a great contrast to Doom's sci-fi setting. Here though you get a mix of both, while still maintaining hell's vibe. It's massive, packed with enemies to keep you busy, and with lots to explore. In the beginning of the Megawad you will be going through some of the more beginner, amateur based level designs. 
The quality, however, goes up dramatically once you're halfway through the Megawad, and maps like this one are the reason why. There are other videos that go through every map in detail, but for first-time players, it is best to go through this one blind and appreciate the efforts made by the Doom community in Japan. Which brings me to what makes this Megawad distinct from the rest. Well, it's point of origin, basically. You see, Doom was released in Japan for both the MS-DOS and even the PC-98 platform that was so popular back in the 90s in Japan. But the game itself had nowhere near the same level of impact as it did in the West. In fact, pretty much none of the iconic shooters in the 90s did. Quake, Duke Nukem 3D, Blood, Shadow Warrior, almost non-existent in Japan. And there are reasons for why that is the case. For starters, you have to look at several things. Their work culture, their preferences in game genres, and their preferences in the characteristics of a person. For starters, they generally work stressful jobs with very long hours. And after getting home late from a difficult day at work, the last thing that they want to do is try to beat Doom Eternal on Ultra Nightmare. The genres of choices generally range from visual novels to JRPGs and adventure games, where they can relax and unwind before the next day. And time is an issue for most of them because of said hours and workload, with a lot of them arriving home very late at night most of the time. And shooters generally require a considerable amount of time to get competent at them due to the skill-based nature of their game design. Also, when you contrast the character designs from, say, JRPGs and visual novels, and then compare them to characters like the Doom Slayer and Duke Nukem, they don't match, and from the perspective of most Japanese people, are unappealing. Where the characters made in Japanese games are embedded in their culture, with traits and art styles from Japan that are unique. There have been exceptions to Western releases like Wizardry and Ultima though, but then again, they are also RPG games, which fits their preferences anyway, whereas games like Doom didn't. I also forgot to mention that arcade games and bullet hells and strategy games were also popular in Japan, with one being a quick session that you could be done with, or something that you could take your time with where there was no rush or agency like there is in an FPS game. Doom does, however, have a small but dedicated fanbase, as evidenced by the Japanese Community Project, and there are those that do play Western games or have higher-end PCs, but again, Japan is a place with its own preferences that are different from the West, and it's why Doom didn't quite succeed over in the East. But in the East came this Megawad that showed the Doom community, hey, we can make Doom maps as well. And that they could. The Japanese community project is a labor of love, with a fan base that isn't as well known unless you're well versed in the history of classic Doom and its extensive modding community. Its collection of maps are a reflection of how this game has stood the test of time with excellent map designs and good efforts made by other map makers that wanted to contribute to a noble idea. This is one of the many great megawads that you can find in Classic Doom. Not to mention that it's also compatible with other mods like Brutal Doom or Beautiful Doom if you want to enhance the gameplay of the experience. It's one of my favorite megawads and I would love to see another one from the Japanese Doom community again someday. I'll provide a link in the description so that you can check it out. Thank you for watching.